the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. Dear students, I am Dr. Khurram Shahzad from National University of Modern Languages, Islamabad. This is our second video about literary theory. In this class, I will be talking about liberal humanism. Liberal humanism is also described as theory before literary theory in Peter Barry's book, Literary Theory. So these ideas I have taken from beginning theory by Peter Barry. It is the time of 19th century when, you know, uh, the chair of English was being established in Oxford and Cambridge universities. And there was a time when people were studying biblical readings. They were going through biblical literature and they were trying to understand the concepts of Bible. Remember, because each and everything was revolving around the God. So everything was coming out of and going back to that God. And time came that reason took its place. And when reason took its, its place, human beings entered that place. So then each and everything was coming out of the human beings and going back to the human beings. So in this lecture, I will be talking about the concept of self. I will be talking about the concept of individuality. I will be talking about that what kind of theory they were adhering to in literary theory before this literary theory subject that we are studying these days. So when the chair was established and they were taking the biblical studies out of it and they were bringing literature in its place, they were saying that literature is going to inculcate the same kind of teachings, the same kind of, you know, uh, good properties, attributes in human beings, which a biblical, you know, text could have brought. Therefore, today we are going to talk about liberal humanism and some of its very important tenets. Liberal humanist philosophical thought contributes to modern beliefs in a reality that can be known directly through the senses and through the employment of rational thought. So this is the reality that realistic kind of real, uh, you know, philosophy that things are out there in the world and we can know them through our reason, through our senses. We can observe them. We can analyze them and then we can reach certain conclusions. Liberal humanism inspired a scientific rational world view that placed the knowing individual at the center of history and viewed that history as the progress of Western thought. So as I have just said in my introductory lines that human beings, they were, you know, replaced God. Human beings or rationality, they replaced God, biblical texts. So it is based on scientific footings. Science believes in stability. Science believes in one truth. Science believes in one reality. So same kind of things they were being, you know, given to literature and it was need of the hour. Dear students, it was the time when they were colonizing so many countries. So they had to produce such type of philosophy so that when Shakespeare will be taught at each and every place in each and every corner of the world, you know, they will be saying that nature is same, human nature is same, human beings, they have got essentialism, truth is same. So you should read Shakespeare, you should read Wordsworth, you should read Shelley. So they created this philosophy. It served as the catalyst for the modern world's reliance on individualism and belief in a common human nature, scientific rationality, and the search for truth as universal knowledge and certainty in the world. They believed in certainty. They believed in universal laws. 
in universal truths and the thought that literature it carries it has universal truth in it so if you read you know canterbury tales so whatever doctor whatever person you find in that text you can find all of them in the third world as well even when i was a student and my teachers they were teaching me they talked about look this parson we can find it in the streets of pakistan they tried to convey the universal truth to us so this philosophy it was propagated in the 19th century on the many of the many schools of thought inspired by liberal humanism to directly inform modern reading practices empiricism and rationalism though western empiricism finds its earliest inspiration in aristotle it took its modern form following the great 17th and early 18th british thinkers locke berkeley and hume the modern self before the renaissance western society defined the self by its location within both a secular and divine order the center of pre-modern epistemology was the great chain of being in which all members of society had a proper place with the rise of renaissance humanism and the enlightenment however the individual began to be conceived as sovereign and epistemologically central so human beings they came in the center they were considered that they are the sovereign they are the people who can make their own decisions they are independent and human nature is same so you should read western literature you should read english literature so in pakistan india sri lanka each and everywhere they colonized you know the, the this kind of literature it was introduced so not only did they give us shakespearean texts they also provided us macmillan notes and york notes so they provided us the lenses that first of all put them on read the york notes and then you will be able to understand what othello is saying or what hamlet is saying literary theory this subject of literary theory challenges all these things so later on i'll try to talk about them as well this recognition reconfiguration of the self spurred by historical events such as the protestant reformation and the scientific revolution ultimately led to the systematic examination of the modern self although many participated four of the more influential theorists were kant descartes and locke kant asserted that the definitive characteristics of the human self was its capacity for reason so reason was given a central place reason allowed the self to understand and order the world with certainty according to kant reason is the faculty ability which supplies the principles of a priori knowledge and a pure priori principles are indispensable for the possibility of experience proceeding from the notion of the unitary self or self consciousness governed by a capacity for reason that is affected by the peculiarities of experience kant felt that pure reason both enabled and compelled humans to construct a transcendental philosophy that articulated the structure and order of the experience world experiential world some of the principles or beliefs of liberal humanism are absolute truth and this is challenged by literary theory literary theory does not believe in absolute truth to you two human beings who are sitting together they do not have the same kind of you know understanding the same kind of ability that at that time in 19th century and earlier 20th century they were proclaiming the world can be controlled and ordered we can picture and represent the world believe in linear progress universality means that text must be studied in isolation of the context and personal ideologies anyways in beginning theory peter barry talks about two tracks of you know literary theory rather i should say theory one was that literature should be studied in isolation there should not be any context there should not be any socio pragmatic culture which should be involved in the text 
we should not study the biography of the author we should just read the words on the page and in practical criticism i a richards talks about this thing so words on the page it should be focused and the second track says that while reading the words on the page we should also talk about the context and see that what kind of experience the text is offering you and then what kind of experience you are going to share to apply the knowledge that you are going to apply on the text so these two extremes or tracks they existed in the 19th century and today's literary theory it you know takes care of both the extremes it takes care of both the tracks human nature is unchanging unchanging it means stable it means same that is why if you read shakespeare shakespearean text or wordsworth so you can find the same kind of characters in pakistan human nature is same this is what they were proclaiming people's individuality personality is transcendent dandam human is enhancement of life purpose the notion that we have a more or less stable self concept the idea that we have more or less stable and coherent self the cartesian liberated and autonomous subject is in charge of his or herself and engages in rational debate with other subjects to arrive at a consensus the conception of the self or subject is fundamental to humanism and underlies for example the typical understanding of liberal democracy dear students let me share some of the things with you here liberal humanism usually according to peter berry it has 10 tenets and some of them i have already explained but now let's read these 10 tenets good literature is of timeless significance timeless meaning timeless timeless value so it means that literature which is produced in america is equally applicable to pakistan is equally good for pakistanis is equally you know good for the human nature for creating humane characteristics in pakistanis the literary text contains its own meaning within itself i have just explained without talking about the context socio cultural background the text is self contained each and everything is there yes each and everything is there it has got form as well as content and both of them are there in the text so we cannot separate form from the content or content from the form the text will reveal constants universal truths about human nature because human nature itself is constant and unchanging so this was the philosophy that they were propagating when you know they were colonizing the world that human nature is stable it is the same so read shakespeare read wordsworth read shelley the text can speak to the inner truths of each of us because our individuality our self is something unique to each of us something essential to our inner core this philosophy believed in essentialism literary theory believes in social constructivism literary theory destabilizes all these things the purpose of literature is the enhancement of life so they were replacing bible and literature was to be introduced so they were saying that literature purpose is to enhance life to improve human life to bring about positive changes in the life of the human beings so read english literature and the propagation of humane values on the other hand literature should always be disinterested it should never have a clear agenda of trying to change someone agenda will be will not be clearly stated but inherently these things will be there they want to change us in a literary work form and content are fused together they cannot be separated literary work is sincere meaning it is honest true to experience and human nature and thus can speak the truth about the human condition what is valuable in literature is that it shows us our true nature and the true nature of society without preaching it shows through drama event character 
conflict rather than explaining, lecturing or demonstrating. What critics do is interpret the text so that the reader can get more out of it. Dear students, these were some of the tenets. So we in nutshell have talked about that human nature is same. It is unchanging that there are universal truths in literature. Okay. Form and content, they are fused together. They cannot be separated. Th these were the ideas of liberal humanism. In the end, I would like to summarize. Literature was being established in Oxford and Cambridge in the 19th century. They were replacing Bible or biblical studies with literature. So they had to produce such type of philosophy that everybody will believe in. So because they wanted that good human beings should be produced. And remember, even in 19th century, only male members were supposed to study in university. Females were not allowed there. Okay. So literature was supposed to inculcate good things in human beings. Universality was claimed. It was proclaimed. Stability was talked about. Rationality was talked about. And there were two tracks which existed at that time. One who said everything is in the text, words on the page. And the other who said that we should also talk about the socio-cultural background in which the text was produced. Thank you very much.